Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and welcome to episode 21 in our quick progression series. Today we're talking docking, and here we have a very simple vessel. We've got a double solid rocket booster stage here with a decoupler in the upper atmosphere. We then have a Poodle engine attached to a Rockamax X200-16 fuel tank. Following that, we then have the largest senior Clampertron docking port. And the great thing about these docking ports is they can actually decouple from any other part, like a fuel tank, without actually having another docking port attached. On the top of the vessel, we have the smaller Clampertron docking port as well. Of course, we have the basics, the probe core, the battery, the RCS tanks, the solar panels and the parachutes. And as well, we've got our collection of science instruments and our Communitron antenna. For re-entry, we can decouple and then we've got our heat shield under here as well. But the main thing with this vessel is taking note of the RCS setup. And if we turn on our center of mass indicator, we can see here that I've placed the RCS jets as close to the center of mass as we practically can. In this case, the center of mass is between the decoupler and the heat shield, which we can't attach the RCS jets to. But all we can do is put them as close as possible to that center of mass. Now you do want to set your RCS thrusters up in a symmetry 4, that gives you up, down, left, right movement, along with forward and backward as well of course. An interesting little feature is this port staging toggle which makes your docking port behave as if it's a decoupler, so we can actually use that in our staging tree over on the right. So just pressing the undo key a bunch of times we can bring the vessel back to its original state. There's nothing overly special or advanced about this craft, but what I did want to really point out was how to set up those RCS jets to get good maneuverability when you're doing docking maneuvers. And obviously you need monopropellant, otherwise you're going to find it very hard to dock also. So we're just going to launch here now. As soon as we hit the launch pad, the first thing we actually do need to do is jump into map view. And we want to select our newly launched Prosperity space station. We're going to set that as our target, and then we're going to time warp around until that space station actually gets very close to our launch site of the KSC. I find as soon as your target passes that desert continent point, that's about where you need to be. Switching back to our rocket, we'll throttle up and turn our stability assist on. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and firing off we launch now. And we're going to start by turning ourselves slowly towards that 90 degree mark. This vessel's got a quite a high thrust to weight ratio. As we ascend, you'll notice that we've got Kerbal Engineer over on the right there, set to rendezvous mode. This actually tells us the distance from our target, and we're currently at over 250 kilometers. Just fast forwarding through the video in this launch phase. You've seen us do many launches now, you don't need to sit through every second of this in real time. That solid rocket booster stage is empty, so off that goes. I'm spending a lot of time trying to keep the vessel pointed so that our relative inclination is as close to zero as I can make it. Keep in mind here, of course, that our space station is pretty much on the same inclination as Kerbin's rotation. So there's really no difference between the relative inclination to our rendezvous target or the orbit of Kerbin. As our second stage empties out there, you can see our apoapsis is climbing to meet the orbit lines of our space station. Decoupling there using our docking port so that we're running on our final third stage engines. Now for this stage I've set up a Symmetry 6 set of Twitch engines. These engines are really versatile if you've got a small vessel because they mount on the side, meaning you can have decouplers underneath and you can still use them for landing and docking at the same time. And there we go, their engine cutoff. We've basically achieved a almost completely circular orbit at the same altitude as our space station or very close to. The first thing we need to do is time warp to our descending node and do a very small normal adjustment just to wipe off that 0.1 degree difference in our inclination. Again, Kerbal Engineer can give you even better accuracy there if you're using that instrument. So relative inclination there is pretty much exactly spot on. The next thing we need to do is plan our intersect so that we can actually allow the Prosperity space station to catch up with us in the orbit. Essentially what we need to do to allow the space station to catch up to us is increase the amount of time it's going to take our vessel to do one complete orbit. Firstly, we're going to time warp until we pass these orange intersect markers. And that's just going to mean that it's going to then recalculate those intersect markers based on our next orbit. So turning to our prograde marker, we're just going to do a very small burn here to increase the size of our orbit. 
as we're doing the burn, you'll actually see there that the intersect markers are sort of jumping around. They're, they're sort of glitching out here on me. I think as I increase the orbit here, though, it'll probably snap in so that we can see this a little better. And ah, there we go. Actually, the pink markers have actually snapped in behind us. Um, so we'll just do the adjustment now based on that. I'd actually just overshot that just a little bit because I couldn't see the markers properly. So we'll just turn retrograde and we'll just wipe off a little speed so that these pink markers now align themselves perfectly. And you can look at the separation readout there to make sure that you get it absolutely spot on or at least as close as you can. And actually that's very close. I've gotten that to within 100 meters of separation. So that's awesome. As we time warp around here, you'll see that our orbit lines are bulging out on this side of Kerbin, and this means that we've got a further distance to travel, and it's going to take us longer, hence the space station's going to catch up with us. The next thing you need to do is set your nav ball so that it's using target mode rather than orbit mode. This is just going to mean that our nav ball is actually showing us our retrograde marker based on the target. So we're doing a very small burn here now so that we can wipe off that relative velocity. Now approaching a little slower, only a few meters per second here to wipe off. So we're just waiting until we get nice and close, or as close as we're going to get. And then we'll just slowly wipe the rest of that velocity off so that we're completely stationary in relation to the space station. So what I'm going to do here now is just move myself over to the other side of the space station so that we're going to be docking with some more light behind us. Again, facing retrograde and wiping off that relative velocity. Now we can right click our large docking port and choose the control from here option. And then we're going to right click the docking port on the space station where we would like to dock and use set target. This is just going to mean that all of our controls, our RCS and our nav ball are all now relative to the large docking port on our little vessel that we're controlling here. What we want to do now is turn the vessel so that we're facing roughly in the right direction. And we're going to switch now our camera mode we're going to switch our camera mode to locked mode. Now the locked camera view is basically relative to the craft itself and it rotates along with the attitude changes that you make. So we'll just turn on our RCS thrusters and you can now move your vessel left, right, up, down using the I, J, K and L keys. At the same time of course you can still use your W, A, S, D keys for rotation. So in order to move ourselves to the right hand side we're using the L key and as we get roughly in position we'll use the J key to thrust back towards the left hand side. Now obviously trying to control your lateral movement with the I, J, K, L keys and also trying to control your rotation at the same time is quite tricky and I even have trouble with it so a great tip is to actually use your stability assist in target mode. That way the vessel will automatically do those movements to ensure that your vessel is always pointed straight towards the docking port. So we're just cancelling out that horizontal movement there using the J key. Again, we're trying to cancel our movement here from the space station so that we're just basically hovering roughly over the docking port. Now we're just going to use the H key to actually thrust forwards. Again, stability assist is taking care of our rotation. As you approach, you just want to slowly make incremental adjustments using the I, J, K and L keys to essentially make sure that you're lined up nicely with your docking port. You want to keep yourself as centralized as you can. Now, you'll notice here that I'm coming in on a bit of an angle from the docking port. So all we really need to do here is move our vessel down. Again, rotation taking care of itself. We can use the I key to move ourselves down and then we can cancel that out using the K key. As we come in we just want to control the speed of our approach using the H and N keys so H moves us forwards, N moves us backwards so we want to just wipe off our approach speed and reduce it basically to about 0.1 meters per second. Turning off RCS and stability assist and docked for the very first time to our new space station. You will have noticed there was a bit of a pull there right to the end. Basically the docking ports magnetically pull themselves together. This is why I turn RCS and stability assist off just so they don't fight against that magnetic pull. So we've sent Bill Kerman out to do an EVA around our Prosperity space station. Basically our mission here today is to ensure the station is A-OK -okay and Bill can then give us the approval to send up our next space station segment. One of the critical parts that needs to be inspected by Bill though is this docking port on the end. This docking port is going to join to the next segment of our space center. 
if we can't get that to dock, there will be hell to pay. So Bill is uh, checking all those areas. The three large docking ports down the side there looking A-OK -okay as well as we approach down towards the tail end of our space station. We of course here have an array of atomic rocket motors, eight on the outside, four on the inside. Bill of course very happy that everything is looking in place. We need to inspect these engines to ensure that there was no damage incurred during the liftoff and the ascent. We have to keep in mind that in our last episode we used the super lifter and we wanted to make sure here, or Bill wanted to make sure that there was no damage incurred by the super lifter which really just hauled this thing up into orbit. Also checking out the integrity of the solar panels and just before Bill heads back, he looks out towards the sun and reflects on just how small he is in comparison to the wonderful universe. Just working our way around now so that we can find the hatch on our command pod and re-bore the vessel again. The inspection is complete, Bill is happy and we'll just grab hold of our little footholds here and climb down and boarding there now. We'll just wait here until the sun sets on the vessel. We don't want to be doing any demonstrations in the dark, that is just horrible for anyone. We're just going to time warp around until we actually get sunrise again on the opposite side of Kerbin. As we come back out into the sunlight, we're going to do a second little document over here just to show you a few different tricks. To undock ourselves, we just right click the docking port and choose undock. That will actually have us floating slowly outwards. What we're going to try this time is docking on one of the smaller docking ports on the opposite side. So we're rotating our main space station vessel around. Just keep in mind that when you've got multiple vessels nearby, you can actually switch vessels using the square bracket keys. Obviously this makes it easier to get your orientation correct if you can actually spin the approaching craft. So we've selected the target docking port there on the side. Again, we're setting up our stability assist to continuously point towards our target marker, which is essentially the docking port. And of course, we're also going to switch our camera mode to use locked mode again. What I like to do is after selecting dock mode, just move your camera so that it's perfectly centered with the back of the docking port or the back of your vessel, depending on what's on the back of it. And then as you're using the I, J, K and L keys to get yourself reasonably centered over the top of the docking port, it just makes it easier to line everything up just visually with your eye. We can now start our approach. So just tapping the H key to force our little RCS jets to push us forwards. Again now, as we approach in, we're going to keep using and adjusting our position using the I, J, K and L keys just to make sure that we're getting ourselves perfectly lined up with that docking port. You'll see there that when everything's lined up perfectly, the prograde marker and the target marker actually appear over the top of each other. In fact, the prograde marker actually gives you a really good indication of which way you need to move to actually get yourself centered correctly. And there we go, we've docked using the small docking port now. One of the great benefits of docking, of course, is to be able to refuel. So all you need to do is actually alt and right click both of the tanks that you would like to transfer in and out of. So we've transferred some liquid fuel in and we can transfer this oxidizer in here as well. Now in this case, of course, we don't need fuel in this lander because we're just coming back to Kerbin. So we'll transfer all that back. And oh, actually, we might need a little bit more oxidizer than that. So we're all ready to go basically, that's that's two docking maneuvers done. And look, practice makes perfect with docking. Once you've done this two or three times, you'll be a pro at it in no time at all. What we want to do now before coming into land is actually make sure that the Kerbal Space Center is in the sunlight, in the light side of Kerbin. So we're time accelerating around and doing multiple orbits here until the KSC comes out from the shadows. And... It's coming up now. Here is the space center here coming out from the shadow. So we're gonna do just one more orbit and we'll just stop time accelerating so that we're around 40 degrees or so from the Kerbal Space Center. And of course, we're just going to undock our small little command pod from the space station. Turn retrograde. Make sure you've got the right docking port selected. Uh, that's a mistake that I've made plenty of times. We're just going to thrust away now from our 
docking station and goodbye prosperity station we will be seeing you again soon now what we want to do is actually do a retrograde burn until our periapsis drops into the middle of the ocean there that's roughly about where I find it best to drop it we're going to ditch that last stage there and we're going to do a couple of little science experiments on the way down grab an atmosphere analysis doesn't look like we've picked that up before we'll grab the mystery goo the heat shield now of course is going to start wiping off a good chunk of our velocity very quickly as we descend into the lower atmosphere coming in here now obviously we've sped the video up here a little and how close can we get how close how close pretty close oh then we're going to actually drop into the ocean beside the Kerbal Space Center no matter no matter reasonably close there see our inclination was probably just a little off there Descending that last few hundred metres with our parachutes there, of course, and splash down. So we'll recover our vessel. So we've picked up a few science points there, not that we needed them because we've unlocked everything. And we've recovered 98.7% of the value of that top command pod part of the vessel. Even Bill has advanced up to level 1. But most importantly, we have started constructing our first base station around Kerbin and we've performed a docking maneuver for the first time. Now there's lots of little interesting things that you might want to do with a space station. In this case the other week, as an example, I was playing around with having lots of little heat shield components that we could actually attach to the side of our main space station. And this would mean that I could save some weight on my little landers when they weren't going into the atmosphere. I could actually use them only when I needed to if I was approaching through atmospheric conditions like on Kerbin. Basically these little tiny components were pretty much just a heat shield with a tiny little RCS tank and a probe core and just a tiny battery. Enough battery to be able to survive for a few minutes between moving from one vessel to another. In fact, with landers, it can be quite a good idea to actually segment your vessel into multiple pieces so you can almost custom build your lander in space, depending on your needs at the time. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I did feel I needed to make a proper docking tutorial before we actually brought the second part of our space station up to dock. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them down in the comments below. Thank you very much to all of those that have subscribed. I just passed 1,000 subscribers, so very happy. You guys are just awesome. Thanks very much for the support. For those that haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. I can't believe how close I've gotten to the Kerbal Space Center, actually. That is awesome. We are of course going to be using our engines as we touch the ground, but we're only going to be landing on the engines themselves, so we've got to touch down slowly. And just coming up, using the engines here, oh, touchdown, yes! <laughs>